Right, well this can all go back together now. I'll just straighten out my flash contact slightly so I can get that in place. And this should just push on and it does. Right. Generally this flash contact's got a longer plastic sleeve on there and just the end exposed. I might do it like that, I think, just because I know that works. It was a very unusual arrangement. I've just put a bit of heat shrink on there and be back. Well, I've got a piece of heat shrink on here. I've done up the four screws here to hold the um, shutter and focus mount to the front of the panel. This insulating washer here the original looked like this. It was broken away on one side. Now I can only presume that was to provide some clearance around that piece of uh, insulation that they'd been pushed on as an afterthought there. That's a bit unusual. The shutter release lever here I'm going to fit in place. I'll just rub a little bit of molybdenum and paste very lightly on that front surface and its return spring sits right here and has to be caught under that tab otherwise it won't, uh, won't work so I've got to get that positioned correctly two screws I'll just get that one started the other one's got a bit of muck in that hole because oh, I was cleaning the front panel, something's just pushed into that, that hole. Let's get that down, check that that moves smoothly, that's good. Do up those two screws. Now I need to solder this connection back to that post. Interestingly, the solder joint was broken there previously. It was never properly tinned. Somebody had done a lousy job of soldering that. So I have to remove that dub of solder and make sure I've got that contact correctly tinned there and then make the contact. The useful thing at this stage is to cock the shutter. Yeah, I want to... Uh, Spring those blades into the open position. Let's do this. So I cock the shutter, and as I'm cocking it, I'll swing the blades into the open position where they'd be held for normal reflex viewing. I did that by shifting that pin across at the appropriate time. Why I've done that is that. If while I'm soldering this there's any spatter of solder or um, flux, it won't land on the blades. And I won't have to strip it all down and clean them. Easy. Don't go looking for trouble. Well as you can see that's all soldered back well there. That went smoothly. No problems with solder spattering onto shutter blades or anything awful like that. I'm just going to apply a bit of black paint around here. cover over our freshly soldered terminal there and it won't hurt to disguise that uh, blue heat shrink at the same time that paint will also glue that washer back in place so that shouldn't cause us any grief not that it's inclined to wander anyway. There we go. That bit's nice and neat. And I can finish cleaning. I'll clean up and put back the last bits from the back of the shutter here. Okay, to carry on reassembling this uh, shutter. Let's go. Now I said the shim washer was missing behind here, it actually wasn't, it was just glued so efficiently to the back of the uh, 
cam that I couldn't see it. Once I started cleaning things, here it was in all its glory. We'll get that little washer, shim washer in place. It's a very thin shim. It sits over there. And its function really is just to stop the little cam from uh, contacting a large surface area and creating a lot of friction as a result. Let's get a bit of lebdin and paste. Let's run it down these edges where it has to pick up the pin. Just sits there like that. The gear that drives it, little pinion. There's a small tab on the back that engages with the slot in that cam. A small washer on shim washer that goes on the front of that. And then this is held in place with this spring. And the spring in turn is held in place with a short broad headed screw. This pinion drives the cocking action of the shutter. This cam here drives the opening and closing for viewing. Two spacer washers go there and there. drives all this fits in here and the first the tooth should drop into the first gap in the teeth there and the fifth at the top One, two three four five somewhere about there One, two, three, four, five. That should be it. I may be one tooth out here. There were changes made in the Reflex S. I'll have to check that. I may have to come back and shift that one tooth. But we'll be able to find out. This plate holds everything in place and I was just putting a little smear of molybdenum in there so it acts as the bearing for that pinion. It's held in place with two screws. Do those screws up tight. This gear and its uh, bush needs to go on next. Just put 
put some molybdenum in the center to lubricate between the bush and the gear. And the gear is smooth and flat on the back face and has a relief on the front face. So the surface against the casting should be flat because there's a relief built into the casting. Having trouble getting that out under the, the wire there was pushed back too hard. That's sitting correctly. The arm. I just put a wipe of molybdenum through the uh, pivot where it's held with a shoulder screw. And on the back face, particularly the underside, which is this side. That's where the rack has to lift it. That's good. It's fixing screw in position. That's a shoulder screw, it's got a, uh, supports the bush in the middle of the gear and the shoulder also supports this arm, allows that to move freely. I'll do that up tight. This bracket's essential because it stops that arm from flapping about in the breeze. get that screw started. Get that screw up tight and I might put a spot of lacquer on that screw to make sure it doesn't run away. A bit of lacquer or paint anything there really would do the job. That's good. The others are fine. I need to know whether the thing will cock there. So I've got a cocking rack and a front cam here. I'll sit that in position. Doesn't want to go. What's catching on what? Is that wire, that flash wire is just catching on that. That's better. So I rotate that, the shutter cocks correctly. I rotate it back again with my fingers. Fire it. The capping plate should rise. Hit that and allow this to run down. That looks good. Let's put some tension on that spring. See if it'll run down of its own accord. Yeah, it does. That's all working fine. And that shutter is ready to go back onto. No, it's not. It's going to say it was ready to go back on, but it's not. I've got this mirror buffer pad that needs to go on there. And so I need to apply a little bit of adhesive to the back of that. And it's not even in front of me. When you're dealing with small articles, don't apply the adhesive directly, just apply it to a piece of paper and transfer over the glue you need to use on the end of a toothbrush. Makes it much easier to control what you're doing and where the stuff's going. Didn't need to flick that over like that. It's while well, I've got that there, I'm going to clean that surface because I've just got a spot of glue on that and I don't want that really transferring to anything. There is my naphtha.
that's better. Flip that back the way I had it. Here it is. You just have to lay this in place. That little cut out is where the gear sits. This is sticking to my tweezers and making a mess of things. That looks fine. I'll give that a wipe of naphtha on the side here. I don't want anything vaguely suggesting a sticky surface against the mirror. That's good. Okay, so the shutter there really is ready to go back on the camera body. Pop that to one side. I've got another task to do before we can put the everything together. Let's clean this mirror. And there's my camera body. Still got to put the cam in that, but I've got to put the mirror in there. The mirror is sitting in this clip waiting to be cleaned. I'll go and clean it. Clean the mirror. I can't say it looks an awful lot better than it did when it started off. But at least we'll be happy that we've got any loose dust off it that may have wanted to come off. Yeah, what I want to do here is is four small pots pads there. Um, that's the mirror rests against those, and I'm just going to put a little spot of glue on those so that the mirror stays where it's put and isn't prone to floating forward. If the mirrors move forward and it doesn't take much, they can rub on the back of the front of the front of the camera, and that can cause shutter faults. So if there's any sign that the mirror is loose, it's worth putting a, a spot of glue underneath it. So here I'm just lifting down that tray. Start the mirror underneath the spring, push it back into place. Got to get it under the springs at the rear, of course. So, if I can lift those up, that's one. That's the other. Push that mirror back into place, make sure it's right at the back of the tray, and that will do the job. That'll stop it from drifting. Those little little spot of glue, that was all that's required. Because otherwise, as the mirror flicks up, it flicks forward. And it can just you sometimes see it on a shutter, you'll see a little scrape mark on the back. So that's that part done. I've got to get the rack, this uh, transfer shaft in. This is uh, looks very good. You might notice that there's a bright area here. That's the wear marks on there. That's quite normal. That's a very good example. That's hardly worn at all. But the front pinion wouldn't uh, wouldn't move on here smoothly at all previously because it was just too gummy with dried grease. Yeah, I've got to get this in place without getting letting it fall out and leaving grease all over the mirror. Now, typically, I apply some molybdenum paste. 
to those surfaces you see the bright marks on, that's where the cams are working. The gear at the back I normally lubricate with a bit of synthetic grease. And put this in place. It goes in a, in a specific orientation. Once it's in, I'll, you can have a look. See that's sitting in place now. You can see the angle that that rectangular section runs at. It slopes up at about, uh, about 20 degrees, something like that. Now the pinion on the front. I'll lubricate the inside of that with some molybdenum paste. And this is a cam surface. It operates against this little cam here, this little wheel here. So I certainly want that to be lubricated and I'll drop that in position. I've got to get the spring wound up to tension. That's a bit tricky. Alright. I need Another full turn of tension wound on that spring from here and it's retained with that notch that you see in the bracket there. It's a bit of a fight, you need stiff tweezers to do it. That's it's sitting there now. That's just sitting there in place. Just looking at my meter cord position. That's sitting correctly. The front of the shutter. Yeah, where that shaft runs in there, I'll just put a little bit of synthetic grease in the centre there in case it's inclined to be a bit dry. And a good measure, we'll just apply a bit of a quick wipe of molybdenum to the side of that gear there. Just make sure this is pressed back out of the way. Got to be able to get this pinion in place there. Just a case of getting those wires to lie down flat. Okay, now the fight begins. Three washers go in each of these four positions. They're lightly dished, they're spring washers. And they are a bit awkward to work with.
That's the lucky last. You never saw any of that, did you? I was busy fighting those washers into position. Right, I need two longer screws to hold the front in position. There. And two of the normal screws at the top. I'm turning this around so I can see what I'm doing. I haven't got a spring on there yet. It is a spring needed. And it hasn't been put back. Here is my spring. This is pretty awkward too. Everything's awkward on these cameras, to be honest. But not impossible. Of course I should have put that on first because it, as it sits at the moment I can't tip the camera up because my washers will go flying but I have got that spring seated correctly. It's not normally the way to do it. The shutter. The shutter can go back. I'll just remove my fingerprint from the back of that and no one will know I've been in here. The release here needs to fit in this gap and it acts on that arm there. Making sure the shutter is set to B. Lower this in from the base. To pull back this chrome trim. Don't lower it all the way. I've got to depress the mirror so that the mirror drops below the leather piece that we've had there. I'll get the first of the washers in and I'm using the normal washers in the bottom two positions because there's no problem there for length. And I'm using two longer screws at the top and my main concern here at the moment is mostly to stop those washers from falling out not anything else. Those screws just need to start just to stop those washers getting away. Right, so I've got the front of the camera sitting loosely in place. The mirror is sitting correctly. I can push the drive cam across. I think it'll engage. Press the release. Will it engage? It's dropped in. It's, so I've cocked the shutter. What happens? The blades are opening and they stay open and it's working. So I've got the timing correct on the first hit. That's a minor miracle. I'll run these two screws in lightly at the base. And we can replace these two screws at the top with the correct screws. Do those up lightly. It's 
set it to okay, we can set it to another speed let's set it to an eighth seven eighth one half quarter I think that's an eighth see for an eighth for a quarter what do we got quarter that's eight that's good self timer let's test that Good. That's all good. I need to put my pinion in here to couple to the meter drum back inside and that's best done before these screws are tightened because you may need to shift the front panel slightly left or right to wriggle the damn thing in. So where is my, my pinion shaft is here. Now I'll put some molybdenum on the tip. That's very square this one. They've often got a bit of bevel on them so they'll lead in better. They certainly made changes during production. Uh, presumably to make things easy to assemble. See if I can rotate this and get it to drop in. Here it is, it dropped in. Another more miracle. Okay. Let's tighten this down a bit. I'll get this roughly right. And then I'll get out my uh, vernier calipers and measure the film, the lens mount to film distance and get that at, get that right by adjusting the position of these four screws but I know that I'm roughly right if this front panel is level it won't be more than about a quarter of a turn a screw out as I run that across there The earlier retina reflexes, there was no adjustment here at all. There didn't really need to be because you were making your adjustment on the helical at the front. They, they want the, the bodies here need to be standard. They need to be, to be a standard distance between the lens mount and the film plane so that you can take another standard lens and put it on there and, it, and it'll work. That's good. Uh, what do I want? A cable release. And I want to put... I need to measure from the film plane to the lens mount. Now basically just open the shutter on B, that'll do that job nicely. But the pressure plate is not the film plane. The pressure plate, when it when the door closes, the pressure plate is sitting up on these four areas here, which creates a small, well, allows a small space through here. It's not the same. If I put a piece of film in there, and then have the pressure plate on top of it, the film will be sitting where the film's always going to sit. So I know I've got the distance correct. So I'll just put a film in there. Run that across, spoil a bit up, yeah, shutter set on B, my cable release in place, is that cocked, not yet it's not, now it is. Right, now I only need my verniers with their 
depth measuring base fitted. Here's my verniers, where's the base? 